Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Stacy's battling a cold, so I'm going to be doing this solo this morning. But we're in uh, Luke chapter 7, uh, 36 verses 36 to the end of the chapter, 36 through 50, Luke chapter 7. And this is the uh, Jesus anointing the sinful woman. <clears throat> Verse 36, now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in the town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. <clears throat> and as she stood behind him at, um, at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of a woman she is, that she's a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men <clears throat> owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had a bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. He then turned, then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much, but he who has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your word, the truth of your word and the work of Jesus, the compassionate work of Jesus. Help us to see our lives and the call that you have for us as well as we dig into your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's important people, quote, important people that uh, want to be around Jesus. So this Pharisee, one of the religious leaders, invites Jesus into his home uh, to have a meal with him. Uh, to have a meal with somebody in the culture was a very intimate setting. And I think, I suppose it is to, in our culture as well, to an extent, when you invite somebody into your home, uh, you want to present yourself well. Usually people want to present themselves well, if it's a, especially if it's someone first time guest to your home. And uh, so, this Pharisee invites Jesus in the home, and lo and behold, uh, a woman comes in who had lived a sinful life in that town, and that's a kind of a way of saying she was a prostitute. So the prostitute has, comes in, and because she learned that Jesus had was eating at the Pharisee's house. So this woman had likely heard the teaching of Jesus, been to some of the the things that seen some of the things he had done heard his preaching heard the teaching and she was moved by that moved to the point of repentance in her life moved to the point where she surmised that if she could just come to Jesus she could be forgiven and it is it is satan's deception for us to think that we can't We've done something so wrong in our life that we can't go to Jesus. He wants to prevent us from going to Jesus. And Jesus stands ready to receive us. She knew this. She surmised this. If you look at the, the people that went down the wrong path in their lives uh, and didn't come back to Jesus, it doesn't end well, right? So, for instance, Judas... Uh, betrays Jesus. Could Judas have been forgiven? Yes. But Satan's 
deception on Judas was you can't be forgiven. And so he goes down a path that is destructive to himself. Other examples, there's other examples in the scripture of people not running to Jesus, but running away from Jesus, not coming to where they can receive forgiveness, but going away from where they can receive forgiveness. This woman knew that going to Jesus meant forgiveness. No matter what she had done in her life, she knew that going to Jesus meant forgiveness. And you can see the repentant posture that she has. This would be pretty awkward. If I was sitting at a, at a meal and um, somebody came down, they, you know, they wore sandals then, so I would say their sandals are off, they're reclining at the table, and somebody comes up to you and is wetting your feet with their tears and wiping that your feet with her her hair i would say i would be in a kind of an awkward position um but she is so moved she's oh so overwhelmed that she had heard what jesus had said before some of his teaching and she knew she just knew she could be forgiven and she wants to change she wants to have new life and she comes to the person who can give to her new life that is what's so beautiful about this but of course, there's other people that um, when people are moved by Jesus, they're, they're skeptical. Oh, how could this woman be forgiven? Doesn't Jesus know who he's dealing with? This is a, this is a big sinner. And so uh, the Pharisee questions Jesus' uh, credentials, right, if you will. Oh, if he were really a prophet, he would know that this woman is a sinner. Jesus knew full well who this was. But the observation, the external observation of this religious leader was, there is no way I would get near her and uh, soil myself by being in her presence. But Jesus allows her to come. And more than that, he stands ready to offer forgiveness. And so Jesus tells a story to this Pharisee and saying, hey, you know, there's, there's two men that owed a lot, one owed a little bit of money and one owed a, a whole ton of money. Um, so 500 denarii, um, that's about a day's wage, a denari, one denarii. So over a year's worth of wages, the one guy owed, another guy owed 50, which isn't small. It's not a small sum. That's over a month, month and a half, almost two months, month and three quarters worth of wages. So both of them owed a pretty substantial amount, but one owes well over a year, 500 days worth of w wages. And they're, both of them uh, are forgiven their debt. And you just ask the question, well, who do you think would really be more grateful uh, and uh, would love more? And the Pharisees said, I, I guess the one that had a uh, bigger debt canceled. So Jesus says, you answered correct, correctly. And then he says, hey, this woman has come in and she has showered me with her tears on my feet, kissing my feet, wiping my feet with her hair. And you didn't provide anything when I came in here because you, you know, essentially what he's, what he's saying is because you thought, hey, I'm, I don't need to do that. Jesus ought to be uh, grateful to be in my presence essentially. But this woman says, no, she doesn't even deserve to be in his presence, but she knows this is the place where forgiveness can be won and had, uh, that Jesus is the one who stands ready to forgive her. And so Jesus says an astonishing thing in verse 48. He turns to her and says, your sins are forgiven. Some people like to say that Jesus never claimed to, to be God. And there's nothing could be further from the truth. Because in Jewish, in this culture in which he lived, only God can forgive sins. And on multiple occasions, Jesus directly forgives sins. He, and they knew full well what that meant. Because in some instances, people put, picked up stones to stone him to death for blasphemy, to claiming that he was God. So he doesn't have to come out and say, hey, I am God. He is doing the things that only God can do. And so 
he makes it's it's unequivocally clear that Jesus is true God while being true man. Um, and that's why the other guests say among themselves, who is this that even forgives sins? You know, and then Jesus again says to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. We just celebrated the Reformation uh, yesterday. Um, and really the, the, po the driving um, point of the Reformation is salvation is by grace alone. In other words, we can't earn or deserve it through faith alone in Christ alone. And all this is based on the Bible, Scripture alone. So, so Jesus says to her, your faith has saved you. It is his grace, ultimately, because he's the one who announced your sins are forgiven. But she received that. She took that in by faith. And so Jesus is offering grace to every one of us. To you know, the whole world, he offers grace. He has done everything to remove the barrier so that we can be in the presence of God. And he's offered all that freely at great price to himself. Grace is very expensive, but it's received by faith. And so Jesus invites us to receive this beautiful gift. And that beautiful gift is for you and it's for me. It's nothing we've earned or deserved, but it is given to us freely. So let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for the sending of your son, Jesus for how he compassionately desires people, to, us, all of us, to come to him. He stands ready to forgive us. May we just uh, put aside the lies of Satan whispering in our ear that we can't come to Jesus, but run to Jesus. When we have failed, when we have fallen, fallen when we have screwed up again, Lord God, that we would run to Jesus and receive from him the forgiveness that he desires to give us. Change our hearts and change our minds, Lord God, uh, that we would leave our life of sin and follow you. Um, but in all cases, Lord God, we know that we cannot do that apart from your strength and the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a blessed week, folks. Take care.